I love designing, and I love technology papers. But when it comes to history, I found history extremely difficult, especially for exams. Without the perseverance of my brothers, I probably wouldn't be standing here today talking to you. I'm proof. And for history, as an example, that C's get degrees.
got a degree or this talent, skill, passion to do something, but couldn't get a job and was unemployed. So we created our own opportunity to inspire the next generation through creativity and sustainability. And our attempt to tackle this problem in our own backyard. This gave birth to the roots. <laughs> Are you connected? What about to learn why? He's down here somewhere. I want you to stand up. <laughs> but he's a hearty man and a strong man of faith. We share the same interests. We are both architects. We are both from Ottawa. Mm. And we both share the same passion for creativity, community, and sustainability. We wanted to change the world <laughs> like everyone does. But we knew we had to start in our own backyard. So we created our first project at the Ottawa Town Centre where we created a platform for our young people to showcase creativity, innovation, and design, and at the same time, understanding environmental issues and sustainability. So we got 8,000 plastic bottles. We got 40 high school students. And we divided them into our four tribes or our four elements, with the challenge to design and build sculptures in one and a half days. This is what our young people created. Highlights for the project was the fact that we achieved what we set out to do, to showcase our young people, creativity and innovation, and to show their commitment and energy. We also convinced 16 schools to work with us and trust us with their students. Fantastic response from, a, from the community with engagement and interaction with our young people. And at the same time, what is possible on a shoestring budget and driven from the heart. One thing we didn't think of though, was, where are we going to put 8,000 plastic <laughs> bottles now? <laughs> so at the end, 4,000 came to my backyard, <laughs> and uh, 4,000 went to Martin's backyard. I'll come back to these soon. Pacifica Festival invited us to do a project. This time we changed the material up. We used bamboo, readily accessible, locally sourced, and we thought, why not this time create sculptures that have a purpose, that have a function, but also has a client. So at the end, it would have life afterwards. We had our four tribes again, representing the four elements, building four sculptures, but this time, we were building four sculptures for primary schools. Each primary school had their own school garden, and we wanted to set up these sculptures with the idea to grow kite, like strawberries mm. and grapes, up the bamboo to become edible sculptures. Mm. The primary school that received this sculpture, Rosebank School, didn't have a garden. <coughs> but really keen to, to get one started. So that led to the next project, which is called The Garden of Avondale. We told Rosebank School, we will help you design and build a vegetable garden, completely out of recyclable and sustainable material. And we will use materials like tires, bamboo, cardboard boxes, newspaper, inorganic waste, and 1,500, 1500 bottles from my backyard. 
This was the bear site that we started with, with the help of the community and the young people of the primary school. We changed this space from this to this. Creating garden beds from tires, a fence line and a sculpture from bamboo, donated soil, mulch, plants and seedlings, and I also donated 1,500 bottles <laughs> and built them a greenhouse. <laughs> to get the community engaged, we ran two community planting days which allowed them to come in and engage with the, with the garden and to create a sense of ownership. This is what the garden looked like three weeks after the event with eight garden beds looking like this and raised tire bed spiraling in between which allowed our older people to come and join us. The garden produces enough fresh vegetables to run a small market twice a month after school. All proceeds goes back into the garden to purchase more seeds and leftover vegetables are given to the less fortunate families within the school. <coughs> Earlier this week, I was asked to go back to the school as I was doing a small doco about how the garden started. And it was great to see and listen to the kids explain how much this garden means to them, their school, and their community. <laughs> As for the rest of our bottles, <laughs> still sitting in our backyard. This is Martin's backyard, by the way. He stacked this nicely. <laughs> Martin just in a big pile. <laughs> but we knew we had to start to repurposing these bottles and start creating things out of them. Mm. So an opportunity was presented to us to hold an art exhibition. We got our team in. And we started to think about how we can repurpose and reuse these bottles to create artworks. We created things, we wanted to create things, that look aesthetically beautiful and artistic, but also provided that function and purpose and was useful for our everyday lives. Aaron Unasa created a carbon bowl out of plastic bottles and was sold on our opening night for $450. <laughs> this is a walker built by one of our high school students who came in on our program. She is now one of our core members of our team. Not for sale that on the night, but numerous, numerous offers we made. We also run workshops where we teach young people how to create vertical bags. We understood that if you cut the bottom of the bottle, you created an offcut. We reuse these offcuts to create lights. These lights suspended from the ceiling or matching bed side lamps comes in a range of four. <laughs> 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 Come talk to us. Here's another light that we created from off cuts. These off cuts come from the green huts at Rosebank School. We want to look at waste as a resource and, in particular, understand the potential from the material. In this instance, the potential of being a translucent material. Here is our 2.0 version. <laughs> Stepping it up a little. Using energy efficient LED lighting systems. <laughs> <laughs> but in all honesty, we've got a lot of interest about the artworks that we produce. And we're looking at creating products. We want to encourage our young people to creativity and social entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. We want to create
create an income for our young people. Hopefully employment in one day, maybe, be a business owner. While at the same time, doing our part for the planet. We are the roots. We are a creative business. We are a movement. We are a network. We're just acting, doing, and responding to the needs in our community. We took a moment to stop and look at what we achieved. To understand what we were doing, what we were about, and where we wanted to go. From this, we developed our five principles. Roots. Always know who you are and where you're from. Intergenerational. Working and learning from all ages. Creativity. Using our gifts and our talents. Sustainability. We are kaitia. Or guardians of our planet. Thinking sustainably by acting locally mm -hmm. and community. Always adding value and giving more back to the communities that we work with. Hopefully, this talk has inspired you to think differently about waste. Mm -hmm. But if not, I'll leave you with this. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your resources. And don't waste your talent. And in true Māori custom, <laughs> I'm going to end with a white tongue. Here come the